Okay, here's video number two of this Ampeg. All right, first things first. Remarkably, um, that black ground wire right there, the one coming off of that black capacitor with all the heat shrink tube on it, you can see it's now sketchily reconnected to the ground there. And uh, that was the problem with the amp. It works fine or works okay um, now that that's hooked up. We've got... Um, you can see that that's no more bad crackling sound now that that's hooked back up. But um, the reason that that broke is because if you see how this power cord is, you know, just moving the power cord moves all these parts around. And there's also that loose can capacitor back there, which I want to touch because the amp is on. But um, all the stuff's got to go. It's got to get um, it's got to get mounted, you know, without this um, without this crazy shrink tube and stuff. This this is the wire that feeds the main part of the transformer, primary winding, and it's supposed to be connected to one of the lugs on the standby switch, not hanging out in free air like that. Um, let's see a couple other things that we noticed in the amp. I mentioned the negative feedback wire before that um, that lug. Right there is where that wire is supposed to hook up. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, may actually sound better without it hooked up, but we could always make it switchable. Um, anyway, goal is to get the amp back 100% healthy again. Got all my, all my parts came in here. I've got the new can cap. Got the new double section cap that's going to replace those two monsters right there with one single correct value cap. That guy's going to get a new new filter cap there. Uh, also got a new power cord because the power cord that they used is, um, is I think, a 12-gauge power cord. And the, the wire inside these, um, inside these um, insulated pieces is physically too large to attach onto the switch. That's probably why they shrink tube this, unless they didn't know what lug to hook it back up to. But anyway, new power cord with a proper strain relief, not some zip-tied mess. Um, let's see, the other thing is um, we noticed that the, um, the vibrato, it works. But just barely, it's really weak. But that's promising because um, that little black square thing in there, um, that means the light in there is working. And what, what it is is probably um, these um, these caps and that little bypass cap, that little blue thing down there. Um, caps are probably leaky, so we're going to replace those too. And uh, hopefully after, it, after we're all said and done, the uh, vibrato will be nice and strong too. So um, I think that's about it. The only other weird thing I notice is uh, I've got the guitar on, so it's kind of hard to see. But um, in the back of the cabinet, you see that reverb tank there and the mounted to the bottom of the cab on those I don't know, wooden spacers that Sony made. The tank's actually supposed to be up above the speaker. And probably doesn't matter that it's down there as long as the wires reach. But um, someone may have actually moved it because uh, if the tank's too close to the transformers, it can pick up hum. So... We'll see about maybe putting that back in its original spot, too, after the amp's all uh, buttoned up and working correctly. But um, that's all for now. Next installment, we'll see all this stuff rewired, and hopefully the amp will be on its way to being healthy again.